Hi everybody, Jill here. You've landed on Jill and Beauty Therapy and I'm going to be doing a very simple, easy, soft summer makeup look. We're doing a full face today and uh, without further ado, here's a little peek as to what the final look looks like and you can decide if you would like to stick around. the Bare Minerals 24 Hour Bare Pro Foundation. So I just like putting this kind of directly on my sponge. It's not as watery as the Tarte Water Foundation, um, but it is lighter than say my Anastasia of Beverly Hills Liquid Foundation. And it does blend nicely. It gives really nice coverage. I have grown to love the finish of this foundation, whereas in the beginning, I just wasn't sure how I felt about it, um, but I have grown to really like this foundation. Well, I used up my little travel size of the Too Faced Conceal Contour Highlight and Retouch uh, concealer that I absolutely love. This is one of, if not currently, my favorite concealer for mature skin. I ran out of that little, it lasted forever. I highly recommend if you are able to find that shade that you need in that travel size to get that because it will give you a very good amount of time to see if you like it or not. And I just completely ran out, man. I was scraping the bottle in there. Got a full size this time. I knew I loved it. I figured out what shade I really loved, which this one happens to be Snow. Um, and I love, love, love. So you would think this would be a pump. This is huge. This is gonna last me quite some time, but no, it's not a pump. It still has that same sort of exact same applicator. So I am really excited to have a brand new one of these. I do find a less is more these days. I do like to tap with a little sponge. I like to bring it straight down. Kind of keep in mind where you want sort of that brightness to be. It's, for me, it's, it's for most of us, it's in the corner here. And then I do have a little bit of a hollow going on here on the side, so I wanna make sure I brighten that as well. You know, think of it as playing with light. If it's something is dark, sort of, it will create that light to disappear there and create more of a hollow, which in some cases you may want that when you're contouring. But in this case, I want the light to sort of bounce back and out. So that's where these concealers can help as well as we want them to conceal any little tiny broken veining, purpling, discoloring that we may have. It's tricky. It's tricky trying to find, you know, a concealer that sort of covers some pretty major boxes that we're looking to check off as we age. And I really love this concealer. All right, now I'm ready to set. Yes, I, I have to set my makeup or it's just really only gonna last a very short amount of time. And I even have to set, you know, this concealer as well. And that is also a tricky thing. Now, I'm gonna be trying something new today. This is new to me. This is the Too Faced Born This Way Ethereal Setting Powder. This is translucent. I'm gonna actually tap it into this lid. That's gonna be the best way to go about that. I thought that was a little bit of a bouncy sort of, you know how they have that kind of bouncy nylon-y? This isn't like that. So I'm gonna tap it into the lid. Okay. 
Okay, I, I can tell you right away that I am loving the finish of this, but we'll see how it wears. I have been enjoying doing contouring, uh, some very light daytime acceptable contouring on my face and going a little lighter with my blush. And so we're gonna do that today. I usually use a Makeup Geek flat eyeshadow called um, Taupe Notch. However, I think they may have discontinued that. I think. So anyway, I bought another one that looked very similar because I've been looking for one that's a little similar. And this one seems to be a little bit lighter, maybe a tiny bit warmer, but it's doing the trick. And can I read this? It's called Beach Please. And here is that little sucker. So I'm going to do some very light contouring. Use I love this IT Cosmetics brush. I desperately need to wash it. This side is great for contouring larger areas. This side is great for contouring around the nose. Um, and I, I've been loving it. I kind of forgot I had it, to be honest. And so I've been reaching for it for this. So I'm just going to kind of tap it, roll it around there. I'm going to tap it over here on my terry cloth towel just to make sure it's not crazy loaded. And you can slightly pinch this if you would like. And I'm just going to create again. We talk about light. So I want to create a bit of a hollow and, and just coax that light to get lost in there. And that's why when you're contouring, it's a little different than when you're using bronzing powders. Because when you're contouring, you don't want to use anything that has the slightest bit of iridescence or glow. You really want this to be flat. You want the light to just fall in there and and stay so you don't want anything coming back at you so this is a matte color and I'm just gonna kind of make that light fall in just a little bit right in here just to kind of give me a little bit more of a cheek a higher cheek bone if you will okay I'm gonna load this a little bit more I've talked about this before, This, and you all have told me what the name of this is, but I just use that little thing right here in the ear. And I use that as my initial start point, and I'm gonna go straight out of there, and I create kind of a bit of a V right away. Anyway, I'm then gonna cup where my actual bone is, right there, and I'm gonna kinda cup that right in there. All right, what's left on here, I'm gonna take it under my chin, right in here, bring it down, kind of really on the top. You don't wanna go under because we want to eliminate that little bit of jaw that we all may have. So I'm gonna go right over the top of that and bring that down. Kind of clean up that jawline a little bit. Okay, and so the nose, I'm just gonna use this and I'm gonna bring it right in here, right up into and underneath my brow. And this is where your nose, you gotta kinda do your own individual thing here. taking my big powder brush now. And I'm just gonna soften that. You're gonna be safe if you always remember to sort of soften each and every application. It doesn't take that much time at all and it's going to pay off in the end when your goal is to have a soft look. All right, so that's it for the contouring. It really doesn't take much time at all because before I really go to the blush at this point, I'm gonna go ahead and get started on my eyes. I'm gonna start with an all over wash. Why don't, we'll just sort of stay here with the Makeup Geek palette I think that I have here and I'm going to go ahead and jump into a light sort of French vanilla color here. And this is called So Pale. It is just really a really nice French vanilla. I don't like using pure white ever in any look. I just think it's very harsh and uh, I don't particularly like it. I'm like, I can't carry that off well at all. I'm 
going to really concentrate getting it here in the corners. I want that to remain bright. Okay. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and actually use the same brush that I have here, and I'm going to use that color that we just used for our contour, and I'm going to incorporate that actually into my look. So I'm going to bring it right up in here, very close to the top of the brow line without going directly up into it. We want to leave a little space. Now your eye shape may be different. I think we tend to gravitate when we're looking at makeup tutorials here on YouTube. We tend to gravitate toward people who have very similar eye shapes and and whatnot as we do. So, you know, I'm assuming that most of you do that and this will work for you. All right, I'm gonna mosey on into now my very dirty <laughs> Anastasia, Anastasia of Beverly Hills Soft Glam palette. I wanna start now warming up this look. It's gonna be a nice, soft, summery look, and I'm gonna go right into something that's gonna give us that. And this color is Orange Soda. So I'm gonna take that and I'm gonna put it a little lower down now. I'm gonna actually lay this brush right into my natural crease, but I'm gonna allow it for sure to go above that crease as it kind of puts on that pigment onto my tissue there. And I'm letting kind of my bone structure here kind of guide the brush back and forth. And then I'm tapping it because I have crepiness and it can skip if I'm not careful. So at first you may want to sort of tap and lay it in there and then once you get that pigment where it needs to be, you can kind of lay it in there and just kind of lightly bring it back. You can tap as you go sort of back and forth and don't go crazy because you don't want this color to come too far down that way. You don't want to flick any pigment in either direction and, and very quickly create kind of a mess. But yeah, tapping, moving it around is, is kind of how I go around that. All right, I'm going to use the same brush and I'm going to go into a color called Rustic. I'm going to tap the very tippy top of that brush right into that pan and I'm going to knock it off really well. And I'm going to take that now and just really put that on the very outside of my mobile lid and up into that sort of natural crease area. Now, so I'm going to load that again. Again, we're using Rustic, tapping that off taking it and patting it right on the outer part of my mobile lid to start. And then I'm gonna go ahead and just sort of bring it straight up. Really wanna control the pigment myself. I don't want this to get carried away. So I tap it off really well. I don't load a whole lot on and then I press it initially kind of where I want it to be. And then once it's there, I can then sort of do little controlled, not flicky movements, but really kind of controlled little padding, down padding movements. And that will help me to control where I want this to go. All right, I'm gonna now kind of take a real foofy sort of domey brush because I want to go ahead and blend these colors together now. Don't have to go crazy, but I do want to get rid of any harsh edges. So I just kind of turn my head and look and make sure that they all look soft. I'm gonna now take a Makeup Geek dome brush. I'm not even sure they make these anymore. Any little dome brush. Now this is a little bit fuller than say a pencil brush because I do want kind of a smoky application, but it is quite a small dome brush, fairly dense. And I'm going to now go below the lower lash line. This time I'm going to go to a color called Burnt Orange. Load it up, tap it off really well. I'm going to actually go into my five times mirror here for this. 
And because I am crepey, I am actually going to tap this on first. and connect it up here. I'm gonna load again. Again, we're using burnt orange in this palette. Open my eyes up and just tap, 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 tap. And I'm gonna connect it up here into the look. And once I get it kind of where I need it, then I'm gonna wipe off the brush a bit. Definitely have to do that with these. Um, and I'm going to now really make that bottom line disappear, softening this, making it quite smoky. You're going to might, you might panic a, a bit at this stage thinking, oh my God, this just looks like a lot. But I promise you it will come together. All right, and I want to brighten this look up even a tiny little bit more here in the sort of mobile lid, but the corner of the mobile lid. And I dip my pinky in the color Fairy. It is a beautiful sunny yellow that is glistening. And yellow is quite brightening by itself. This is gorgeous, and the payoff is amazing. And I love when that happens especially with little light sort of colors like this. Again, I'm gonna kind of blend this. And that's it, that's all we're doing. It is really easy, I promise. It really is. All right, next thing we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be curling our eyelashes. This will help to actually lift the eyelashes out of the way so tight lining is much much easier as well as open the eye. I never used to curl my eyelashes uh, f really up until about maybe two years ago, a year and a half, two years ago I started doing it and it has made a big difference. Going to be tight lining so choose a really rich dark black, I mean a true black you're gonna want something that's creamy. It makes the application a little a little easier. However, when they're really creamy, many times that means they don't stay put very long. Now, today I am actually using Man Eater. This is, I believe, by Tarte. It's quite creamy, very easy to apply. It lasts okay, um, but it's a give and take. Do I want something creamy and easy to apply? Um, or do I want something that I may have to hang out there a little bit, but it'll stay a little longer? Anyway, I'd rather just have something creamy that will last, you know, probably about two or three hours. And, um, and anything that you put up in the tight line, when you blink, it is going to transfer down below. I've never had anything not do that. So I like to go from corner to corner. Just make sure you stay underneath that tissue line when you start getting close in to the inner corner. So I kind of tilt my mirror and then I open my eye and look back a little bit. And I do try to also scrub it in underneath the lash line as well. <laughs> it's not the most prettiest look when you're watching somebody do this. But just doing that, I mean, can you see the difference? It, it really accentuates the lash line. I don't have a ton of eyelashes. I'm not a false eyelash wearer. So between doing this and adding mascara, it really does give me a much better sort of open look and the illusion that I have much nicer eyelashes than I actually do. Now I am going, sometimes I don't, but for this particular look, I am going to actually waterline down below. I want it to be softer down there, so I'm not going to go with a black, just a dark brown. I am also going to really scrub this down even a tiny little bit under the lash line. 
Finally, mascara. I go ahead and go in with the L'Oreal of Paris. This is the Air Volume, and I have to say I have been really liking this one. It is getting a little clumpy these days um, as it gets a little older. However, I'm able to kind of continue using the applicator to kind of get those clumps out of the way, but I've been pretty dang happy with this mascara. It gives me length as well as volume, and that's really what I'm looking for. Not just length, but volume as well. Your brows, your brows really are so important for your entire face, for the look and even, you know, the shape of your eye. They're really powerful. So I take my time. I may rush through everything else if I'm in a hurry, but I do not rush my brows or securing and putting on my wig that whatever I'm wearing. So I always take a breath and find the time to just slow down and put my brows on. Benefit is my brand of choice for brows. I really haven't wandered out of that brand enough to tell you if there's anything similar. I just sort of landed here and I've stayed. So the first thing that I do once I kind of take the spoolie through and get powder, foundation and whatnot out of there, I then go in with the foolproof brow powder. Now, if you're not familiar, these come in different palette colors. I am using five. And there are two colors here, not sure if you're gonna see that or not, but there's a lighter color in the front, gets a little darker back there. However, uh, it did not come with this angle brush. I don't like the applicator it comes with. It's a little pointy sponge applicator, works okay in the beginning, but I just toss it. So find just an inexpensive, sort of stiff, angled little applicator. I do tend to sort of drag it right over the both colors. And this is how I do my brows. So rather than talk through it, I'm just gonna go ahead and hopefully make this a relaxing experience as you watch how I do my brows. After I soften that powder, which by the way, all of these products are waterproof. Once they're there, they're there all day. Um, I go in with the Gimme Brow Tinted Brow Gel at this point. This is in 4.5. Um, I have experimented with colors and just knowing the color of wigs, the color of the rooting of the blonde wigs and, and whatever that I wear, this is the color combination that seems to work really well for me. So I do like using a tinted brow gel because I have white brow hairs and this sort of uh, gets that covered up. Plus it separates the brow hairs that I do have and it gives me a more natural look. There is a learning curve with these tinted brow gels, just so you know. I've learned that I have to stick with my right hand, because I'm right-handed, when I do my left brow. I just have to turn it this way and pay attention to the angle that I'm using the brush right through here. 
I mean, the first few times I really did kind of make a mess. Don't get frustrated, just keep practicing with it. I think you're gonna find this really sort of does bump up your brow game a little bit. I'm gonna let that hang out for just a little bit. And yes, I do finish it off with a clear brow gel. This is the, the uh, they have a new name for this. Um, it's actually worn off. I've had this for so long. I don't know what the new one is called. I think it's called the 24 hour brow gel. Clear, uh, I love the applicator of this. Again, it separates the brow hairs that I do have. And yes, it will keep it locked in like nothing else. So once it's where it needs to be, it stays there all day long. If I happen to get a little gloppiness from that tint, this will come comb through that and uh, eliminate that as well. So it's just a nice final kind of finishing touch to this whole thing. I never used to have to use all these products for my brows. It's just as I've aged and my brows have aged, I've had to add slowly something else to give me the look that I like. Now we're gonna do the cheeks. So I've done some contouring, but I still want a little bit of color in there. That might be good. All right, I'm gonna go in for blush wise to the Bye Bye Pores blush. This color is called Sweet Cheeks. It's a warm peachy pink. And that sounds good to me. These are fairly pigmented, so I'm gonna go in real cautiously with this and I'm gonna put it really kind of right in the middle of where I know I'm gonna do a little highlighter and where I did the contour. So I'm gonna kinda just kinda go right in the middle, right in here. I do like a little color kind of right in this area. I'm gonna bring it actually kind of again, just kind of a, a bit of a cohesive look here. My goal is to look a little sun washed, if you will. All right, doesn't take much. Again, these are highly pigmented. This is the It Cosmetics Bye Bye Pores Blush. And I'm gonna take that big blush brush and I'm gonna go over the top of that just to soften everything up a little bit. And I think what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna get on some hair and then I'm gonna come back. We're gonna finish our cheeks. There's something else I wanna try that's new and I'm excited about it. And we're gonna do our lips to finalize this look. I'll be right back. Summer is a great time, I think, to play with highlighters. I like really natural, subtle, sort of, I don't know, tasteful highlighters. And I'm really excited to try this one. I saw this, it was a little bit of a, you know, kind of a, one of those purchases I didn't plan on doing. It's by Buxom and it's called Wonderlust. This is their White Russian Glow Highlighter. I love the White Russian lip gloss. Anyway, I'm excited to try this because the color looks absolutely gorgeous. I'm gonna tilt it so you can see that. And I'm hoping it is subtle and that it works. So I'm gonna go ahead and use the brush that I've dedicated to my highlighters here. I'm just gonna get that baby loaded. I don't know what to expect here. And I like putting these right here in the temple area. Oh yeah, I can see that. Hmm. And right here in this area too, especially in the summertime. I do like doing that. Now, obviously it's not quite summer yet. We're even barely creeping into spring here. I'm also gonna just use the littlest bit right in there. It's very pretty, very pretty and it is not a white, it is pigmented, but it is really pretty. However, I'm gonna go ahead and soften it even a bit with my powder brush here. All right, I'm gonna do something really soft with my lips as well. I mean, if I'm going out, most of the time I don't do my lips at all. I put on a little bit of um, sort of balm to keep my lips soft and hydrated because I wear a mask. You know, we all wear a mask when we go out. So 
but that's not the case right now. But I still want a really soft look. So I'm gonna go in with my absolute favorite Charlotte Tilbury Iconic Nude Lip Liner that needs to be sharpened. And I'm going to put up here and I will also put it at the end of this video. You will be able to click on it, a video that I did for thin lips and how I sort of go about lining my lips uh, and, and applying my lip products to give me an illusion that I have a little bit more of a full lip than I actually do both upper and lower. I'm going to soften that. So I'm going to go in, instead of just a lipstick, I'm going to go in with this here. This is called Undone Beauty, and again, I'm going to put the link to this down below. I just thought it looked really pretty. So I'm going to go ahead, can you see that, and apply that. Oh, it is very pretty. It is very, oh my God, this is gorgeous. It is kind of sparkly, but in a fabulous way. Oh my gosh, this, out of all of this, this may be my favorite purchase. Wow, it's so soft, but wow, it's gorgeous. Wow, good purchase. This is gorgeous, perfect for supper too makes this look I think I tend to go quite soft on my lips most of the time because I like the focus to kind of be on my eyes I love how this turned out. It is very soft. And even though I like to play at my eyes, it still is, is quite a soft look. And I hope you found that it is doable and it is really, really simple. Just get out that makeup, sit down someplace, be comfortable, treat it as kind of a ritual really, and get in there and play with your makeup, you guys. You do, that doesn't mean you have to look really made up. Practice at making everything very soft. I think really that's the key as we get a little older is not necessarily stop wearing your makeup or eliminating steps of wearing your makeup. It's just softening all of those steps. So your end result is soft. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you took away at least one little tip that you're excited to try. In the meantime, I'm gonna see you guys very soon. Got a couple wig chats coming up, coming up this next week actually. So be on the lookout for those. This is one of them. See you soon guys, bye bye.